Knock, knock. Who's there? Engine damage. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are jumping on to the topic of knock, detonation, timing, uh, desensitizing knock sensors. I've had a lot of uh, viewers ask about this specific topic so I thought I'd throw a quick video together to talk about some of the different topics and we'll look at desensitizing the factory knock sensors to try and uh, determine if we have false knock things like that. Now. Uh, if you find this kind of content helpful, by all means, please click the subscribe button, hit that like button, and you know, if you want to turn on notifications, I'm not going to complain. Let's get down to it though. What is uh, knock? Knock is pre-detonation or combustion at the wrong time or you know uncontrolled combustion. There's a lot of different things that can cause knock, and what we're often looking at is I, in an ideal world, there's a certain point in time in which we want the combustion uh, to happen in the uh, cylinder in order to drive the piston at a maximum effect of uh, power. And by doing that, that's where we generate the most amount of power. And timing as we know it, everybody kind of has this false sense of like, oh, more timing equals more power. That's not the case. More timing does not equal more power. Less timing doesn't equal less power. Uh, what it is is there's a specific angle in which it is the prime angle in which to uh, have that final combustion of the mixture that is going to generate the most amount of power. It's generally around six degrees after top dead center, uh, but of course things like stroke and and uh, you know the the crank uh, rotation, you know the crank and stroke combination are going to change a little bit of that but we can kind of shoot for that general area but there's no really way of us to know when that peak uh, uh you know explosion is happening and so what we often do since we don't have a dyno if you have a dyno you can literally see whenever you hit that as you add timing you will hit that peak and then adding more timing will either not generate more power or power will start to fall off or you'll get into the point of where you get into engine knock. And what's happening is, is that we're igniting that mixture. We ignite it, uh, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 degrees before top dead center. And the idea is that we start the ignition there. And then as the piston comes up and compresses everything, that's where we hit full ignition and it forces the piston down. Now, as we advance timing, what can happen is we can... Uh, light the uh, mixture off too early and in doing so we're actually fighting the compression stroke and that's where you're going to get a lot of your knock from and so that's the very bad kind of knock now some of the other stuff that we have to keep in mind is as rpms climb things like that we retain heat in the cylinder which brings up cylinder temperatures which will also lead to pre-detonation uh, high iats will lead to pre-detonation what is effectively happening is we're hitting that magical point where the air to fuel mixture will ignite without spark uh, so there's not a one size fits all kind of idea uh, or mentality because you could be running the the uh, most dialed back timing table on the face of the plant you could be running 15 degrees at wide open throttle still be getting pre-detonation on a boosted application because the air is too uh, hot the more air we cram into the cylinder to compress the more cylinder temperature that we're going to build all these different things are factors but what we do often find is on a factory ECU setup, the knock detection sensitivity is cranked through the roof. And that is because they are designing these motors to go in hundreds of thousands of cars all over the country, all over the world with all different kind of gas qualities and things like that. And so they make things very sensitive in an attempt to keep all these motors safe and out of warranty concerns, things like that. And so we have to be able to go in and determine whether or not we are touching something that is considered real knock or false knock. So we're going to be working directly underneath the spark table for all of this. That's the, the big table. And we've got these two high octane, low octane base tables. All these other tables over here are going to be uh, additive on top of these base tables. So we do our tuning generally on the base table. We can get off into some of these other ones on more advanced uh, things. But as a, a quick example, if, if you look at the IAT table, you notice as the IATs get higher, it starts pulling timing and that is to try and mitigate, uh, you know, burning all of the uh, mixture off too early. But if we look at our base timing table in here, 
we get up in here and you notice that the timing goes down generally in the higher rpms and that's just because of the amount of time per rpm is is lower uh, so uh, where we might need 30 degrees to reach a peak uh, burn on 2000 rpms we may only need 19 degrees because of the speed of the piston and the rotating assembly things like that but uh, what we see here is 19 is pretty conservative in most places and so we can generally pick up a couple degrees and it will actually increase power now if we get to the point where we're moving into knock we're, we're inducing knock into the engine because we're running too much advance well then we've gone past peak power that's always going to be past peak power that you're going to be able to uh, dial out on your tune and so what we often do is we'll come in here and uh, start adding timing until we see knock and then we'll take two or three degrees out from the the high octane table and that should get us pretty close to where that peak power point is for a standard timing table it's not as effective as using the dyno that's one place that the dyno exceeds is being able to follow our torque curve along with our timing and see what we need to do to get maximum timing out of it but this will get you really close but what happens is the over uh, aggressive knock controls on these systems are going to start getting into uh, false knock and we will start shifting down to this low octane table which has a lot of timing pulled out of it we went from 19 degrees down to 10 in the same area uh, so what do we look for a couple things is there's some built-in uh, knock that is not real knock burst knock is one of them that we need to look at across the different generations and so we have an enabler and then we have a in this case the amount of knock versus rpm that burst knock can pull we like to zero these things out we're not worried about burst knock because we're looking at the entire knock table the knock retard table on the scanner so we can zero this stuff out and get it out of the way and if we look across the different generations we're going to have something along the lines this is going to be a fourth gen we're going to have a burst knock right here and say more deal. we have a base knock versus cylinder uh air delta uh, cylinder air mass delta we can zero this table out and then if we go into the fifth gen platforms we're st we're going to have the same table here where we can zero this table out see it's not as aggressive on the fifth gen and the reason behind that is is direct injection is not as prone to knock because of the uh w the effect of injecting directly into the cylinder as opposed to inject injecting into the port now on the fourth and fifth gens, we'll see another one in here that's going to be our uh, static retard. And not all vehicles are going to come with static retard on here, but some of them will have something populated in here. And that will show up on the knock table, even though it's not real knock. Once again, we can zero that out and ignore that because we are logging real knock. Where it gets into the interesting part is where we go over into the actual knock sensors. So what do we do whenever we get knock on that table? Well, first we go in and we use that knock table to subtract timing from the base table. So our knock table is going to match whatever our high octane table is. It should have the same low uh, layout, should be uh, RPM versus whatever is on the other side, cylinder air mass generally. And it will have the same amount of cells and it's logging logged knock retard per cell and if we come in here and we have a couple cells in here that starts to pull some timing we want to go in there and subtract those from our high octane tables i go over this in all the individual generation uh, timing tuning videos out there so check out the playlist at tuning101.com if you want to get more into that uh, but so we start to bring this stuff out but what happens whenever we subtract timing from this table and we still keep on registering knock, specifically if we're still registering the same amount of knock. Say down in this area, we start getting one or two degrees of knock in this area. We take three, four degrees out even trying to get rid of it and it stays there. Well, what's happened is that we have done something that has exceeded the threshold of our knock sensor sensitivity. And this once again is just goes back to the factory calibration is overly sensitive. Now we don't want to get carried away whenever we desensitize. We want to do it within reason and so if we had two one or two degrees of knock in this table and we've taken four degrees out and we still have that one or two degrees of knock what we want to do now is then go into our knock sensors and we'll go in there's going to be different uh, tables across the generations and we're looking for a knock sensor level and so in this one the big one's going to be this versus rpm once again this is a third gen kind of layout and this is the uh entirety of the knock sensor table if we look at uh, fourth gen and fifth gen they're going to look a little bit different we're going to have cylinder by cylinder and these values are tied back generally to a actual you got to remember a knock sensor all it is is a 
crude microphone. This is tied back to like an amplitude that the knock sensor is reading. So the lower the value, the lower the threshold of sensitivity on the knock sensor, the higher the value, the more uh, uh, desensitized it is to that knock situation. And so let's look at the fifth gen real quick. And it has the same cylinders table, just a little bit of a different layout. And you can see down here in the lower air, uh, cylinder air mass, we're really desensitized to that area because it's not as critical. We're not into the higher air mass areas where we're making a lot of power where knock is going to cause damage. And so what you want to do is come in here and find these areas that you have trouble. You don't want to necessarily wholesale just bring these whole tables up, but target the areas that you're getting knock. And you're going to have to look at your cylinder air mass versus engine speed to find specifically where that area is. So say if we're only having knock above 4,500 RPMs on this platform, we're going to raise these up. And I like to start out a little bit low, maybe uh, shift everything up by 15%, 1.15. Uh, actually, let me back up because I accidentally skewed that, but we've got our 3.2 as our initial. We'll bring it up 15%. We've got a new value in there. And on the multiple cylinder uh, layouts, we're going to have to do that for all of those. So anywhere that we're above uh, 4.5, we would do our 1.15. And then same ordeal for the previous generations. We'll come in here and look at this table and say, okay, above 4,000, we're having an issue. Let's bump our sensitivity up 15%. There we go. And on the third gen, same ordeal, above 4,000. We'll bump our sensitivity up by 15%. Now we're gonna load this in, go back out, re-log, and look in that area where we had that one or two degrees of knock. It should go away or be diminished. Uh, we want to just bump this up to the point where we are no longer reading that knock. We don't want to do giant adjustments to make this thing super dumbed down and, and turn all the sensitivity off. We still want that sensitivity there for protection from actual knock. So we go in, uh, lower the, uh, bring up our knock sensitivity levels, our thresholds as you were, until the knock is gone. Once the knock is gone, then we can go back and start adding that timing back in until we actually do find the real knock, the real detonation, and that's where we're going to know our threshold, our limit on our base timing tables. And then, as we said, go ahead, pull two, three degrees out at that point in time. You should have a very efficient, safe timing table. So hopefully this quick video helps some of you guys out to understand knock desensitization, uh, why we do it, how we look for false knock, things like that. If you got any questions, as always, hit up the comments down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, and thanks for everybody that suggested we do one on knock, false knock, and all this fun stuff, knock sensors, uh, you know, hit those up in the comments. I'm going to get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.